We all love Pokemon, but there's no denying that sometimes things can get pretty annoying. Like having a 24 hour livestream that only reveals one Pokemon which is shown off in a 26 second trailer a few days later. And throughout the Pokemon series, there are quite a few annoying little moments that get on everybody's nerves. I'm Mike, Poketips Mike, and today we're gonna try our best to remain calm while I talk about some of the most infuriating moments in all of Pokemon. A fan actually messaged me this video idea on my Instagram, and as soon as I read it, I had so many annoying Pokemon memories pop back in my head, and I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this video. And since all these annoying things might make you want to take a little break from Pokemon by the end of the video, might I suggest you another game, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is an epic fantasy RPG mobile game available on both iOS and Android that everyone is playing. More than 10 million players worldwide have already downloaded the game in less than 6 months. Raid has a deep storyline, over 400 champions to collect, 13 spectacular locations, and honestly, this always blows me away, check out the amazing details and graphics on these champions. And, in Raid, you have the ability to personally customize and choose the artifacts and design a unique mastery build for each one of them. There's something in Raid for everyone, and with over 300,000 reviews, Raid has almost a perfect score in the Play Store. And the best part? It's free to play, and trust me, you know I love free. Click the special links in my video description, and you'll get 50,000 silver, as well as a free epic champion to start your journey, as well as being able to access the awesome some new rewards program which gives you a daily login reward for the first 90 days of playing the game. Good luck and I'll see you there. Thanks Raid for sponsoring this video and let's start off the list with number one, Roaming Pokemon. Most Pokemon are pretty easy to find. You go onto a certain route and you run in the grass until you eventually encounter it. However, Roaming Pokemon are a little different. They'll start off in one location, say Route 1. But by the time you get to Route 1, it moved to Route 24. So then you go to Route 24, but surprise, it ran to Route 22. And to make things even worse, roaming Pokemon, when you finally manage to pin them down and get them in a certain area, will run away from you immediately in the battle. Personally, the most annoying roaming Pokemon for me are the legendaries Raikou, Entei, and Suicune. Here's why. In Pokemon Gold and Silver, the first games that these Pokemon came out in, tracking them down was so annoying. To track them, first you would need to actually encounter one of them in a wild Pokemon battle, which is tough enough since they're always running around. Then, when it inevitably escapes from you and runs away, you'll have to open up your Pokédex menu, check out its Pokédex entry, go to the area section, and then finally you'll be able to see where it is on the map. And once again, by the time you get there, it'll run away. And if you think they're annoying in Generation 2, they're 10 times worse in Fire Red and Leaf Green. In addition to how annoying they are to track down in these games, there's also two major glitches with the roaming Pokémon in these games. Number one is an IV glitch. Simply put, there's a bug in the game that makes it so roaming Pokemon will have very low IVs. This means if you manage to catch these guys, they're gonna be a lot weaker than they should be. And number two, the Roar glitch. Normally, if a roaming Pokemon runs away and escapes from you, you'll be able to track it down again and eventually catch it when you find it. However, if any of the legendary beasts in this game use Roar to escape from the battle, they will be gone from your game forever. Oh my god, I hate catching these things, they're so annoying. I've noticed in the newer Pokemon games like Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire and Ultra Sun and Moon, they have not brought back roaming Pokemon. Maybe somebody sat down at the Game Freak headquarters and said, you know what, roaming Pokemon are pretty annoying, let's not bring them back. Next, we're gonna talk about another thing from Pokemon Gold and Silver. Let's paint a little scenario here. You just beat Bugsy and got your second badge. You figured out the far-fetched puzzle and made your way through Ilex Forest and finally made it to Goldenrod City. When you get there, the first thing you do is go and challenge the gym. You easily beat all the trainers in the gym and make your way to the gym leader, Whitney. You slaughter her first Pokemon, Clefairy, and then you get to her second Pokemon, Miltank, which is something you've never seen before. But it can't be that tough, right? You send out your Quillava, and it doesn't do that much damage to it. And then, Miltank starts to go for the move, Rollout. That's right, we're talking about Whitney and her Miltank. 
I think for a lot of people, one of the most annoying memories they have with Pokemon is defeating Whitney and her Miltank. This thing is literally, well, a tank. It's very bulky for the early parts of the game, so it's not gonna go down easily in just a few hits. And its moveset is insanely good. It has Stomp, which is a pretty powerful normal type move, which gets that stab, same type attack bonus. Milk Drink to heal up its HP, which is already pretty high. Attract, which makes it so your Pokemon can fall in love with it, and also make it so you might not attack it. And Roll Out, the terrifying move that does more and more damage every single turn. I think the first time I ever fought Whitney, I was using a team of Quillava and probably Pidgeotto, and I went into her gym thinking I would have no problem, and then she just rolled out and knocked out both of my guys really quick in one hit. That's when I learned I needed to use more Pokemon. And on top of that, if you can beat Whitney and defeat her, she's supposed to give you a gym badge. But she doesn't. She starts crying. You have to talk to somebody else, and then go back to Whitney, and then finally she'll give you that gym badge. Whitney is seriously a very annoying trainer. Number three, we're talking about Generation 1's trapping moves like Rap and Fire Spin. Nowadays, moves like Rap and Fire Spin are kind of lackluster. The moves are weak and do very little damage, and then do a little bit of bonus damage to you each turn for 2 to 5 turns. They'll also stop you from switching out your Pokémon. However, in Generation 1, they were a little different. Instead of stopping you from switching out, they stopped you from attacking completely. So let's say you were walking and you got into a wild battle with an Ekans and it used Rap on you. That means you have to sit for 2-5 to five turns just taking damage while Ekans hurts you more and more and more, and you can't do anything about it. Well, I guess you could switch out, but it's annoying. Every time I play through Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow and something uses Rap on me, I get so annoyed because it's such a ridiculous move. I hate having to sit there and just watch my Pokemon slowly die in front of me while I can't really do much about it. Next, we're going to be talking about the Rotom Pokédex. Now at first glance, a Rotom Pokédex seems pretty cool. You have a Pokémon inside of your Pokédex. And on top of just being a Pokédex, this guy can do lots of other cool things too. Like in Ultra Sun and Moon, it has its own lottery which can give you bonuses like bonus EXP. So aside from promoting gambling, this guy doesn't sound too bad. That is, until you start to play the game for a long time. You'll notice that this Rotom likes to talk. A lot. You don't know how many times I wanted to check the town map in my Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon games, I tapped on the bottom screen, and instead of letting me use the town map, Rotom decided to tell me that it's time to save my game. I'll choose what I want to save my game, Rotom, you don't need to tell me that. I really feel like in Pokemon Sun and Moon versions, it's not that bad, but for some reason in Ultra Sun and Moon, they turned it up to like 11. It seems like every time after you get out of a wild Pokemon battle, or every time you enter a new area, Rotom's gotta tell you something, and he makes you feel like a beginner because he tells you the same tips over and over and over again. And I'm definitely not the only one who finds the Rotom Pokedex annoying. If you go to Google right now and type in Rotom Pokedex, one of the top search results is Rotom Pokedex annoying. I feel really bad about finding the Rotom Pokedex so annoying because I know the Rotom means well, but it's just... It needs to stop. Now we know Rotom's not going anywhere in Sword and Shield, it's still gonna be part of the Pokedex, but I'm hoping it'll just be a little quieter in those games, please? And last but not least, we have the Safari Zone. The Safari Zone is something I've always found infuriating ever since I started playing Pokemon. It really does sound like fun at first. For paying just around 500 Poke Dollars, you get access to this huge, fancy safari area with plenty of rare and exotic Pokemon. But as soon as you encounter a Pokemon in the Safari Zone, you'll notice things get a little weird. First off, you can't use your own Pokeballs, which aren't a problem because they give you a bunch of their own, but they aren't as good as, say, an Ultra Ball would be. You'll also notice you can't use your own Pokemon to weaken things in the Safari Zone. Instead, you have these weird options, Bait and Rock. So you try throwing a Pokeball at the Pokemon you encounter in the Safari Zone, but it breaks out. 
and then it runs away. Yup, that's right, in the Safari Zone, Pokemon can run away from you, which is totally different than almost every other part of the Pokemon games. I also never really liked the whole bait and rock system. If you gave a Pokemon bait, it would be less likely to run away, but harder to catch, and if you threw a rock at a Pokemon, it would be easier to catch, but it would be more likely to run away. Now, to be quite honest, I don't really want to throw rocks at my Pokemon, that just seems kind of cruel. And if all that stuff's not bad enough, there's also a step limit for the amount of steps that you could take in the Safari Zone. After your steps run out, ding dong, you're out of there and you're kicked out. Now, I definitely don't hate the Safari Zone, I actually wish they would bring it back in some of the newer games like Sword and Shield, but I always find it rage-inducing. It's so annoying being in there looking for a rare Chansey or a rare Tauros, finally encountering it after 30 minutes of hunting, throwing one ball, and having it run away from you. Now, I've never had this happen to me, but I can only imagine what it would be like to encounter a shiny Pokemon in the Safari Zone, get so excited over it, try to catch it, see it break out of the ball and then flee. If that ever happened to me, I would have definitely taken a very long break from Pokemon. Now I know in the title I said five, but I also want to throw a bonus honorable mention in here as well. And that's going to be Pokemon running from you in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Pokemon running from you in these games can be extremely annoying, especially when you're trying to get to a very large chain. Chaining Pokemon is pretty important in these games because it gets you Pokemon with better IVs and also increases the shiny chance. However, just like in the Safari Zone, basically almost any wild Pokemon in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee can run away from you. Now this is only an honorable mention because there is a way to tell when the Pokemon are going to run away from you by looking at their animations. So if you're keeping a close eye on everything, you'll definitely be able to avoid having your chain getting broken. If you want to know more about that whole mechanic, I made a video a long time ago when Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee came out explaining how you'll never lose a combo ever again. You can find that video in the description. And with that my friends, you now know my list of 5 things that I find extremely infuriating and annoying in Pokemon. I'm very curious to know what you guys find the most annoying in Pokemon because this is only a list of five things. There are so many things in Pokemon that people can find annoying so please let me know about those in the comment section below. I love making these types of videos because it really gets people talking in the comments and I have a great time reading them. As always my friends if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and my friends I'll be seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.